So to get uh, you into uh, to do a series like this, he obviously has to be intrigued, and he obviously was with the script and with the book. What do you make of a gentleman in Moscow? There were stories that apparently Richard E. Grant and Benedict Cumberbatch were sort of mooted for the central role because it's a big meaty role, and it's a, I'm sure it's a it's a delight to play. And it was you could hear from that that he you know he wanted to do it, and he was very he was very kind of keen on it. I haven't read the book, which you have. I have you yes. Uh, and is the book absolutely page turning? Because it was you said a huge publishing sensation. It was, uh, and I I think when I interviewed. Amor Towles. I called him Amor Towles. He said Amor Towles. Amor Towles. And I would, I would imagine that Ewan is correct because he's saying his name uh, an awful lot. I, I thought the book was intriguing and fascinating. Yeah. And I felt as though it, sh it ought to be a true story. But it's not a true story. But, you know, it, it, it manages to uh, explore revolutionary Russia and... Uh, family relationships, yeah. exactly as Ewan was talking about. So um, it's eight episodes. I've seen five. I'm not sure how many I'm able to talk about, so I'll, I'll, I'll restrict it to the kind of to, to the early stuff. But um, when he said that thing about the Metropole Hotel is a character, which is a kind of cliche, but, 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 but the fact is it is, and so there's a lot of comparison between you know, people talk about you know, Wes Anton and the Grand Budapest Hotel. I was actually thinking of the Terminal, weirdly enough. Yes. You know, that idea about the Terminal becomes his whole world, particularly because in the Terminal he does a thing about going behind the outer spaces and he discovers the whole sort of world behind it and that's what because there are all these doors and all these wall openings in the metropole so he finds that he can he can literally become the people within the walls and yes. which you think he could explore it for the rest of his life yeah and it certainly and you raised this there's the idea that as his world is physically shrunken, actually his world begins to expand because he, he starts to discover that they, that it's not just about the fact that he was posh and privileged and entitled. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of good discussion about, um, about the fact that he knows about fine wines and, you know, that that's, that's not a privilege. I mean, you know, that, that is a privilege. It's, it's anyway, so, so that's all good fun. You can tell that he's enjoying himself. I liked the fact that the character was, it's it's a very physical realization. I was thinking of um, uh, Ken Branagh's uh, Hercule Poirot yeah. because there's the moustache which tells you everything about him, and then very early on, I'm sure this is in the first couple of episodes, the moustache is attacked, and and then the way in which his hair and his moustache are worn is very much a kind of indicator of where his character is. And of course, what happens during the course of the episodes, I've seen five of them, he, he ages and this young girl that he meets, who he's kind of enchanted by, he's infuri infuriated by her originally. And she's, you know, doing stories. Nine-year-old Nina. Yeah. And then during the course of the thing, she grows up. And so, you know, as he ages, obviously... But it sort of leaps forward through periods of time. Obviously, if you read the book, you know you, you know all of this anyway. <clears throat> There's a lovely moment when when he's first, he goes back to the metro, he's told he has to be in the metropole, and he goes back to his suite of rooms, and, and he's told, and he, and he says, yeah, okay, fine, this is my suite of rooms, this is all fabulous, and what, what, what are you doing? The guy says, I'm going to take you to, um, to, to, to where you're going to stay, so I'm going to stay here. He says, no, you're not. And they take him upstairs to this kind of Shawshank Redemption style attic. Because this is a guy from the Emergency Committee of the People's Commissariat for in, Internal Affairs. Yeah. You don't want to go in front of them. <laughs> the People's Popular Front of Judy. Exactly. And there's this whole thing that no matter how diminished his circumstances are, he has to remain, you know, he says they can take everything away from you, they can take your house, they can burn everything down, but they can't take away who you are. And so there's this sort of, you know, stubbornness, which which McGregor is clearly enjoying doing, of being the character that he is, even though his circumstances have been diminished and he's ordering the finest wines and even when all the labels get taken off the wines, he's still ordering the finest wines. I really enjoyed his performance. The point that you made about it ought to be a true story actually really hits the nail on the head because as the as the story moves on and it gets into the you know 1930s and he and, and he ages and there is there was a one point actually when I was watching it and I briefly thought for a moment hang on is this based on a true story which of course it isn't. But I I did like it. I enjoy I mean it, it it's very it's very easy to watch. There's, you know, within this small microcosmic world, there's politics, there's people growing up, there's romance, there's a lot of, there's the, the big chargy dogs that, that career around and destroy the restaurant. And of course, <clears throat> he's co-starring with his uh, with his real life partner. and uh, Mary Elizabeth Winston. And you said you read somewhere in an interview that they had an intimacy coordinator they have an intimacy, on set. Yes, yeah, they, have an, they had it. So he has... A relationship with yeah. his wife. Well, you know, his real life wife, uh, but this is Anna played by Mary Elizabeth Winstead. And 
Yes, he said they had an intimacy coordinator, but he said it was it was justified because of everyone else who's involved because yeah. there's a sound crew and there's there are cameras and everything else and and the intimacy coordinator is for them as much as for anything else. But it, on the face of it, it does sound um, unnecessary. Well, yeah, although intimacy coordination, I'm you know, I'm all for it. It's a great thing. But the the character that she plays is this sort of movie star, who you know it's all glamour and you know dogs running all over the place. And there is a I mean, a few episodes later on in which there is to be a visit from Stalin, um, who she it's is, always going to be something to look forward to. Always going to be. And I don't know whether you remember, but we we reviewed a film a while ago about the Holodomor. You know about the the, the famine. Uh, okay. Okay. We spoke, but anyway, so it it sort of chimes with a, a lot of other stuff that we've been right. that we've been talking about. And not too, anyway, I don't think it's any great. Um, you know, it's it's not the crown, but I think it's very enjoyable, and I think it's largely enjoyable because Ewan McGregor seems to be enjoying himself so much, and it's it's easy on the eye, and I found my it's very Moorish. Because I had thought that I would just watch two episodes and I watched five because, hey, you know, it was there and I was really enjoying it. I don't, I'm not sure that it has great depth, but it, it was fun. It is fun. And that's on Paramount Plus. That's a gentleman uh, in Moscow. 